It was not. Uh, hello. You should hey do guys. That bit. Hey guys. Welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. It was a nice tonic. I was telling Dan this morning uh, when we turned up that I had the most god awful rehearsal last night. Everything was in place. The gear was perfect. The band was perfect. Everything was perfect. And it was that occasion where nothing worked. Nothing worked. Yeah. And it's it's just impossible to. Everything worked, but nothing sounded right. And I think ninety eight percent of it, man, is in there. Yeah. Red light fever. Did you ever get that? Never get that. Right. Uh, except maybe when we've done some live stuff. Okay. Like when TPS has done some live I stuff. I think that's a fascinating subject. Anyway, moving on. Um, quick, a quick thing. Yes, there was no show last week. We Sorry. had some. Yes, yeah, so there was a technical <laughs> issue. So, um, but we're back. Everything's good. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll so we're going to get the technical issues have given us a couple of questions to ask because mm. we've had some problems recording very high gain sounds and we thought that we were just being idiots but we think we've unearthed a cabling problem mm. which has been highlighted by when you use a particular kind of sound so we're going to explore that and if we discover what it is we might get into it for the the subject of a show so yeah. yeah sorry sorry that we weren't here last week yeah Okay. Uh, I see you've got a new guitar. Oh, hey! <laughs> come on! Um, yeah, so this, I picked this up uh, last week. This is a 1952 Fender Custom Shop telly. So you've wanted a, um, a Maple Neck Blackguard style telly for a while? For a long time, for a long time. And I've been... A couple of things I've struggled with is just, you know, you pick up guitars and it's like, it's really nice but not quite the right one. Mm. And a lot of the black guys that I played had massive, crazy, crazy, crazy necks. necks. Yeah. Um, and I found this one, and it's a, it had a custom neck on it. It's a 65 C shape, strat shape neck. We're going to make a video, uh, hopefully today, comparing Dan's two tellies because a few people have seen this in Instagram and on Facebook and said, oh, I'd really like to hear that next to the red one. So we're going to do that as a completely separate video for a Tuesday. So yeah. let's hear it now, Dan, okay. just to uh, get a bit of schwang on. Uh, yeah, this is, so the two amps we're using today, we've got the Marshall. It's attenuated a little bit by the power station and we have the Super Reverb. I can't, I can't wait to hear them both side by side. It's so weird when you get a new guitar, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah, it, yeah. it ought to be the most familiar thing in the world, but it's like, oh, it, this is new. It's a world apart from Red. Yeah, yeah. It's um, Well, which is why you wanted it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. But it has that, the, the clean...
there's a there's a top end that this has got that is just that black guys have that just is unlike any other guitar. Which Hopefully, I just we, love. before very much longer whatsoever, that video will be up, or by the time you watch this, it'll already be up. So you can check that video out and uh, comparing the two and how they sound different, even though they're the same guitar. Right, on to this week's subject matter then, Daniel. Um, so we've done quite a few shows on fuzz now. Mm -hmm. And even in TPS's two something year history, we've still only done one show on Wawa's. Yes, and it's still called Wild Wild Part One. Yeah, one day there'll be a part two. <laughs> um, so the question, the question we get asked all the time, and the question that we're asking all the time is, what happens when you combine a wah wah and a fuzz face, and you introduce buffers to that whole thing? Because as anyone knows, if you try and use a traditional fuzz face type uh, fuzz pedal and a wah wah, you can step into problems. Correct. So the questions uh, we're going to ask today are, what happens when I put my fuzz with my wah wah, traditional fuzz? Um, what happens when there's a buffer in that relationship? And how does that differ between germanium and silicon classic fuzzes? Uh, and just for good measure, we've also included um, the Russian pickle, which is a silicon based Big muff style fuzz. Exactly. So it's very different from the um, traditional fuzz face style sun face, which is what the analog man is. So we've essentially got fuzz face, big muff, and we've got silicon and germanium versions uh, of the fuzz face, and we're going to put them in all the relevant orders. I hope that was as clear to you as it wasn't to me. <laughs> okay, so let's start then with the um the germanium transistor fuzz face. If you want to have a quick swing on this, just so we can familiarize ourselves with this sound. Should also say that we're using the full tone Clyde standard wah, which has an inbuilt buffer happily, which means we can turn it on and off and yep. uh, get some comparisons going on. Okay. So that's the germanium. This is the uh, BC183 silicon. I've got the volume down on the guitar. Oh, okay, sorry. And this is the Big Muff. So that's the three fuzz sounds we're looking at. Totally different kettle of fish, the old... Um, the Big Muff. Yeah, yeah. so I don't, I, hopefully you will have noticed that when I started playing the Red Dot Sun Face, I turned the guitar volume down to show you how well it cleans up. Cleans up beautifully off a, off a Strat particularly, or a Tele. Um, when we switched to the 183, I also had the volume down, then turned it up. Fatter, fuller, more bass. Um, Lot, and more gain. It's, there's a... There's yeah. a yeah. It said that, um, and if you want to watch our video on um, Analog Man Fuzz Faces, there is a whole hour and something mm -hmm. dedicated to it, so, <laughs> so good. get into that. Um, yeah, big, blimey, I hadn't, I hadn't realised, because I'm not really a big muff user, quite how different they are. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it just, it's extraordinary. The, and interestingly enough, this, the Russian Pickle, uses the same, uh, well, they use NOS um, BC183s, um, similar to the transistors in the Analog Man, but the design is totally different. So when yeah. we're talking about transistors, people get really hung up on the transistors that they're using. And yes, of course, they make a big difference. But the design, you know, is really, it's everything. Yeah, you know, uh, everything else that's going on. Exactly, in exactly. Actually, at this point, it's probably relevant to mention, when we talk about germanium-based pedals, so something like a fuzz face 
type fuzz or um, you know a germanium type treble booster like a Dallas Range Master mm -hmm. derived treble booster. Uh, don't get that confused with germanium clipping diodes in an overdrive pedal. That's right. Yep. So for example, a Klon's got a germanium clipping diode. That doesn't face the same issues in terms of wires and buffers that these germanium transistor. So germanium diodes and germanium transistors aren't the same exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Because <clears throat> apart from the sonic differences, there's powering issues and things with these, so yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that's the sounds we're looking at. Now, if we, um, what we're going to do, we're going to hear, first of all, we're going to have the wah going before the fuzzers. Right. Right. Now, I've got the buffer turned off. So In the full tone. In, in the full tone. Traditionally, the you know the the crybaby the you know the um, the fox style yeah uh, wire pedals they have a, quite a high output impedance right compared to an, a normal overdrive pedal um, so when that is on the output impedance is low with wire pedals the output impedance is still quite high. With fuzz pedals, the input impedance is low. Now, normally you want it the other way around, okay? So, yeah, a traditional wire pedal has got a high output impedance. So, we'll hear what happens when we play. If you we click this on now with the wire. Yep. And you so go, and then I'll kick the fuzzes. I'll kick the fuzzes on. So the buffer is buffer definitely, is definitely off, off in the full tone. Yep. Okay. So. Um, And this is how it sounds with the buffer on, with it, with that and the else. Yeah, turn the buffer up to max, I reckon. Okay, just play for us. Yeah, so we, we just get the same level. The, okay, the, the, I'm just the, going to do one other thing, which is to... Um, can we just try this a sec with the yep. buffer on and off? I want to turn the guitar volume down and see what happens. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, so here's buffer is off at the moment. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go onto the neck pickup. I'm gonna turn the guitar all the way up, and then I'm gonna turn it down to about eight, which is like the the bit where it all falls off on a strat. So here you go. Uh, same thing, I'll, and I'll play an E chord. Hopefully that'll make it easier to hear. <laughs> Tiny, tiny bit more hair with the buffer on. Yep, but it's not dramatic. No, not okay. at all. Right. So, the signal path now is the wah before the fuzzers. Okay, now I'm going to put the NKT on. Yep, and I'll go back up to full volume and I'll stay on the neck pickup because, well, why not? That's the NKT, BC183. So this is way too much fun. <laughs> Muff. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the buffer on. Why don't I use a well one more? <laughs> okay, into the analog, into the um, NKT. <laughs> So 
Sounds like a wah-wah. It's a wah-wah. Okay. Let's try it with this. <laughs> Right, we've been around the houses a bit because we were struggling to create the problem. Yes, and what we found out was Analog Man is just too good. <laughs> He's too clever. So it looks like, you know, we try. Okay, so yeah, just to, just to back on that, we tried the full tone wire, we tried a Vox True Bypass wire, and we tried a Crybaby with um, a standard Crybaby with standard buffer Crybaby yep. with the buffer in it. And actually, they all sounded pretty good. I thought mm. into. Yeah. Into the NKT red dot. So you can't use your germanium fuzz after your wah wah. Fooey, I say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it all just all depends on the blue pedal. I got an email uh, a couple of weeks ago from Hubcap John, who's a fan of the show, and he sent us a couple of these. Um, basically, it's a if, fuzz face built into. If we get taken off the air for this, I'm going to go nuts. Right. Tobacco advertising. Okay. I bet that I bet that's one of the things. So you can, you know, I, I'm going to try not to be politically whatever here, but you can publish some pretty bad things on YouTube and right. have them available to watch. But there are certain things you really can't do on YouTube, and I'm going to. I'm interested to know if that's one of them. Oh, right. Yeah. So this is this is one of the things we get um, flagged yeah. up on with YouTube. We've been taken off the air. <laughs> So this is, uh, Hubcap John also makes some handmade effects pedals and he has sent us this germanium fuzz face clone that he makes, right? Very it's traditional. Thin, very, very traditional. So, um, you know, whereas Mike's got voodoo magic and witchcraft going on in his... Or, or just maths. Just, <laughs> just some very clever maths. <laughs> um, Hubcap John has made a very traditional... Fuzz face. Let's have a listen okay, to it then. So That sounds ace! Okay, so that is the sound of the fuzz. I've done all the playing. Play some, play some guitar.
Philharmonica. I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, as a traditional sounding fuzz face, it's fantastic. Right. Right. So we're we're thinking that the input impedances are somewhat more similar. So as it will be. More, yeah. more traditional. Right. Right. The input impedance of this is going to be lower. So, okay, okay. Then let's hear it with the old. So, this is with the wire pedal and the buffer off. So, what we're expecting to hear, Ooh. what we're expecting to hear is less frequency movement. Yeah. Okay, with the, with the buffer off. There it is. There's okay. the problem. Right. So, it's, it, we've lost a lot of that wariness. What happens if you turn the buffer on now? In now, the if you turn the buffer on, what's going to happen is the output impedance of the wire will go down. Phew. Yep. Yeah. And that's going to drive the input impedance of the fuzz. Now, normally, we say don't use buffers in front of the fuzzers yeah. because they don't like... Um, they, they want to see the inductance of the coils. They want to see all the stuff going on here. This is the one situation where a buffer before the fuzz can help. I'm just hoping that it's going to sound uh, better. Right, so I'm going to turn the buffer on. Okay, uh, got me Clapton woman tone going on there. So immediately it goes much um, woollier. Yeah. Would you mind just turning it on and off while I play? Yep. in heck, Daniel, why don't we there do this is. more often? There so is. all those times we've said, oh, don't use a buffer in front of you, Germanium <laughs> first face. Well, okay, once again, buffers are definitely not created equal. This is very true. And they operate at different parts in the circuit, and clearly the ones in Wawa's are of something very different from the ones in overdrive pedals in their bypass state, so we're yeah. not even talking about the same thing. So, chalk and cheese, night and day. What's, what's important with this, though, is that the buffer... Apples and oranges. Uh, Marshalls and fenders. Fenders and Gibsons. LED and fluorescent light bulbs. What's, light bulbs. Important, what's important with this is that the buffer is part of the circuit, right? But it's bypassed when the wire is off. Yeah. The reason why understanding the buffers and fuzzers thing is important is because if we just stuck a buffer, an ordinary buffer, so in front... Forget the wire Forget wire. the wire pedal. So this is if you've got your fuzz after a buffered pedal. Exactly. This is why this, is why this, this seems strange, a strange solution. is because if we just stuck a buffer in front of the fuzz, we get this. So I'm going to stick... I'm going to put the... Take this off here. Add a buffer here. Yep. All right. Uh, G2 has inbuilt input and output buffers that you can have on or off. Right. So here is the sound of the fuzz face. Now I'm going to add the buffer to the front of that. Let's just go on to the back pickup a minute for that because that will be interesting. Okay. Now just to show you, without the fuzz, if I add a buffer, this is the normal guitar going to the amplifiers, and if I add a buffer you'll hear very little difference. So.
and adds a little bit of stimulus yeah, to I the top all, end. Yeah, I'm very sensitive to it. I can always hear it. Yeah, but nothing compared to what it was like going to the No, pilot. no, no. So right. it, was, it was taking all of that and just making it. So that is why it's commonly said you can't use a buffer in front of a fuzz face. Exactly. So I want to just try the... So that was with the germanium transistor yep. fuzz face. Let's yep. try it with the silicon fuzz face and the Russian pickle. So here's okay. it for silicon. <laughs> Much less of an issue with the silicon. Still there, but nothing like with the germanium. Nowhere near as yep. uh, bad. And now we'll try with the Russian pickle. Imperce Be imperce virtually imperceptible. imperceptible because the Russian pickle has that really high input impedance. So it's already being driven very nicely yeah, by what's yeah, coming yeah, out of the yeah. guitar. It doesn't need that buffer. But if it sees an even lower input impedance, sorry, if it sees an even lower uh, input impedance from the guitar at the input of the Russian pickle, it doesn't matter. It's still being, you know, driven really well. Yeah. So there we go. So, okay. We should have got to that earlier, really. But there we are. We will... Include that in the wrap up. Okay, we're now going to hear the wah pedal after the fuzzers. All right, so everything we've done so far has been the wah going into the fuzzers. Okay. What happens if you put the wah afterwards? Okay. Okay, so this is with the wah before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So after it seems to be less fuzzy and more wary. Yeah, because all so that massive frequency spectrum of the fuzz is all being crammed into that little area that the, that the wah pedal yep. is now operating in. Whereas before, that swimming frequency was being plugged into the fuzz. So any harmonic overtones and everything from the fuzz was still coming through. So at that point, if you were, to, to try and make that relevant for a second, if you were running a really clean amp, mm -hmm. that would start to get problematic, wouldn't it? Because you're losing a lot of your fuzzy sound because it's all getting filtered. It, it, well, it's not, uh, if it's you just wanted a... to retain the fuzzy sound. Yes, okay. But if you were going into an overdriven amp, because mm -hmm. I know lots of people who say they much prefer their wah wah after their fuzz. Right. And I wonder if, if part of that is because they're going into an overdriving amp. So you're getting the overdrive in the amp. There you go. Okay, all right. Um, one thing we should do before we wrap up is just talk about if humbuckers. Makes a huge absolutely. difference to any of absolutely. this. Absolutely. Um, apologies, we haven't used any humbuckers yet today. Uh, for me, anyway, fuzz faces, wah wahs, it's all about single coils. But uh -huh. I appreciate that that's not for everybody. So um, I'm not playing this, by the way. I've just picked it up to look pretty against your 335. <laughs> Come on then. So, um, <laughs> I want to grab the grab the beast. Uh, okay. Um, why don't we start off by just listening to the fuzz, fuzzes with Les Paul, okay. just to see, you know, where we are.
Sorry, just had to put some top on there on that thing here. <laughs> Just um, spare a thought for Henry Jeskovitz at this moment, um, oh, CEO man. of Gibson, whose company, while he's, um, I don't know, sat there in his mansion having a glass of champagne. We hope everything you... at Gibson is great because we like Gibson guitars. So Very much. All of that crap that's going on with Gibson, whatever that is, bah, what a boring situation. Good luck everyone at Gibson because we love your guitars. We do very much. Uh, sorry. That's sorry, amount of annoyance coming off me there. How old? Flip, can you have a billion dollars worth of turnover and be in debt? All I say is, if you're going to change the Les Paul logo to something that looks like an what Dan just said was, if you're going to change the Les Paul logo to something that like a three-year-old drew. On an etch sketch Yeah. It's... No. On crack. Yeah. Don't give three-year-olds crack. There you go. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Never do that, right? Nobody ever do that. Unless okay. you want to design the Flying V modern. That, look, see, that, that how, that's, that's how Les Paul is written. 958, 958. See, actually, Henry's problem is that uh, he's saying that the guitar market isn't doing enough to attract new customers. What's that want? New? I want this. Should I tell you why? Tell me why. Gaming is so much easier. I was watching my eight-year-old ah. nephew the other day trying to play G. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's the hardest thing in the world compared with amassing an army, sending building them. a whole city. Yeah, yeah, sending them into battle. And, you know, the graphics are awesome. So, the... the Problems of the guitar industry. No, let's just carry on the show. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to hear humbuckers. Yep. Uh, while before. Okay. There you go. Fuzzy horrible mess. What was going on there? I couldn't hear a damn thing. Just right at the end, I put them all on. I was trying to be Eric Clapton. Uh, Les Paul. Okay, you, you need to wipe on me there. And failing, I might add. Really? <laughs>
Cool, I think that's us. I think that's it. Yeah. We've answered all the questions. Yeah, we sort of we started with some questions that changed. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it de- so, what have we learned? We've learned that it all depends on the fuzz face that you're using. Fuzz faces aren't fuzz faces. You yeah. know, every single one has got a different thing. If we're looking at purely traditional fuzz faces, yeah. then yes, but there's so many variants now. Yeah. It seems to me there are there are three variants here. One is what you just said, the mm-hmm. first face. Two is your wah wah. Mm-hmm. Three is where is the buffer? Because buffers are part of this whole discussion. Where is the buffer in the signal, and what's it doing? We we proved that actually the buffer built into the wah doesn't seem to make a you know night and day difference. And in fact, the only way we got the uh, traditional style first face to sound good after the wah was by Adding a buffer yep. to the wah, yep. to the wah's wah circuit, That's not right. to the wah's bypass circuit. There However, when we added a buffer in front of the fuzz, as if another pedal was bypassed and giving it a buffer, mm-hmm. that's where all the problems started. Yep. So when you're talking about buffers from other pedals and you're talking about the buffer in the wah sound of the wah wah, they are two different things. That's right. That's been a revelation for me today. Okay. I, I, that's what I've learned. And see. The fuzz face, I mean, it's such an amazing circuit, and I'm, I'm loving it more and more. And the whole input impedance mismatch, that's a reason, um, you know, the fuzz face is one of the first pedals to have a true bypass switch on it. Because when it's on, that's, you know, really low input impedance, high output impedance. Right, right. Imagine that with, imagine that with a with circuit bypass. There'd be nothing left of your guitar sound. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, I have to say, the whole low high impedance thing just totally goes over my head, and I need to go onto Wikipedia or something and do some reading. Okay. I'll, I'm not gonna, now. Not now. I'll find a way to to, to make it really yeah, yeah, simple. Yeah. I know it shouldn't be that hard, but you know me. It's a weird sound with humbuckers. I thought though, wah pedals and humbuckers. It, it seems to really crush that bandwidth. Well, I guess it, it depends, doesn't it? If you're using it with humbuckers and a first face, what you've got there is like double compression mm. plus into the amp. The Marshall was overdriving a little bit. Mm. You know, Clapton made it sound pretty good. His wah wah and his humbuckers, didn't he? In Cream this is true. 67 there or 68, whenever it was. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but with the, I think when you add the fuzz, mm. it's odd. Mm. Or at least for Dan and I, whose brains are in single coils 90% of the time, mm-hmm. um, Maybe that's why it's old. Okay, but brilliant guys, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, what a big thank you to everyone that's commented on the videos. Really appreciate that. We do read every single one, um, and we, you know, we, we try and answer as many as we can. Yeah, if, um, if there's a kind of semi-sensible question, then we'll try and answer. Yeah, please do. Um, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey, where I bought this guitar. As there was another one just like it, wasn't there? Yeah, it's probably sold by now, but yeah. anyway, yeah. Uh, in the US of A is? Uh, would be Riff City Guitar of New Hope, Minnesota. Uh, and in Australia? Uh, Pedal Empire of Queensland, Brisbane, Brisbane, Queensland, Brisbane, well Queensland. Done. Well done, well done. Uh, also, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Yes, get the app. Get the app, which because is called Flip. Floppity flop. flop. Lens. Lens. Slip lens. Get the lens app. We're lens. Start, we're going to start hopefully doing some stuff uh, via the Patreon lens app if we can ever get our act together to do it. But we'll it's, do it. it's on the cards. Wicked. Didn't say which cards. Um, yes, and finally, if you guys feel so inclined to visit the uh, that pedal show store.com, purchasing a lovely garment or hats and gloves and doing our very own range of Ambipure home fragrances <laughs> soon. It's oh, nice. nice. Oh, did nitrocellulose. <laughs> Two stroke. Mm. Have you got a smelly dog? What you need to smell is nitrocellulose. Mm. Or case glue. Case glue smells great. <laughs> case glue and nitrocellulose. Right, come on. I saw a runner on the way here running with a dog. <laughs> running with a bag of dog shit. Oh, nice. And it's just... There's, there's, there's nothing like it. I mean, you can be as cool looking as you like, but when you carry in that thing, that eventually will get tied to a tree on a national park. Walk yeah, somewhere. yeah, yeah. Um, I, have a th- I reckon that's why so many people have small dogs. 
Why? So the bag is not like <laughs> Simon's got a dog that's the size of a small horse, and the result is more problematic, you know. Yeah. On that note, we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>